We're now ready to talk about <clears throat> the very last topic, which is antivirals. This is the second type of medication or, or way that we can protect ourselves from coronavirus. And remember, <clears throat> we talked about <clears throat> the coronavirus as having this RNA genome. And if the spike protein binds to an ACE2 receptor, <clears throat> and ultimately as a result of that interaction, you deliver this RNA genome into the cell, first thing that happens then is that you begin expressing the genes that are in this RNA genome. And, um, <clears throat> and there are about 27 different proteins encoded in this genome. And some of those proteins, uh, we, we've only talked about a few of those proteins. We've talked about the spike protein it's on the outside of the virus. There's also a, an M protein, a membrane protein, and an envelope protein that's part of the shell. Also some nuclear capsid protein. Those are all known as structural proteins. Um, but in some ways the more interesting thing are the non-structural proteins. So near the five prime end of this genome, the first half of the genome encodes a whole bunch of non-structural proteins. And these are proteins that play critical roles in the replication of the virus. So, so these all become what we call then drug targets, because if we can create a small molecule inhibitor of any number of these proteins, those we're, we're going to call antivirals. Those are medications that can then prevent that protein from carrying out its essential role in the replication of the virus. So, so that will be a way then for us to treat someone who has become infected with the coronavirus. And we'll be able to stop the replication of the virus and minimize the, uh, the extent of the disease in those patients. So the antivirals are another critical need we have for protecting ourselves from this infection. So just to give you an example, we've already talked about one of these protein targets in the past. Remember, this is the RNA. For about the first half of this genome, you make one long messenger RNA that encodes a polyprotein. So if you convert this RNA into a long polyprotein, uh, you then have to somehow cut this, this polyprotein into the, into the individual proteins that can carry out their function. So one of these proteins is, is this protein here, which is called the main protease. So the main protease actually cuts itself out of the polyprotein first, and then proceeds to cut up the other remaining proteins uh, into the individual proteins that can go about their, their business and do their job. Now let, let's take a look at the structure of this main protease. It comes in two subunits. Each subunit has an active site. So it's a protease, so that means it can bind a protein. And if the amino acid sequence of the protein is just right, it'll fit in the active site of this main protease, and it will hydrolyze the peptide bond here and again over here to release that individual protein. So I think you can see that this protein plays a very important role in the ability of the virus then to proceed to create all the proteins needed to replicate it. So what if we could come up with a small molecule drug that is, in fact, a peptide analog? So it looks a little bit like a string of amino acids. It's a peptide. But they're modified in a very important way so that, number one, they're able to bind to the active site. So they're very specific. They'll bind to the active site of this protease and hopefully no other proteases in our cells. And as they bind, they will then block that binding site so that this protein cannot carry out its important role of, of digesting or hydrolyzing the other proteins out of the polyprotein. So you will have stopped the virus dead in its tracks as it tries to replicate. This is a particularly interesting little antiviral in that it is designed so that it actually forms a covalent bond with the cysteine it's right down here at the bottom of this active site. There's a yellow sulfur that makes up this cysteine. And this is designed so that when it docks in here, 
that cysteine forms a covalent bond with one of the atoms that makes up this antiviral drug. So this is actually known as a suicide inhibitor in that once it binds, it's gonna stick there via that covalent bond. And this particular protease has been inactivated then uh, forever. Hi there, Mark here, a colleague of Dr. Tim Herman's. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our other coronavirus resources available at www.3dmoleculardesigns.com slash scienceofcoronaviruses.htm, including a paper modeling activity where you can create your own physical model of a coronavirus. We hope you enjoy, and thanks.